Hi, this is Danny J. Lewis, also known as Enzyme Black, and I'm a course developer and tutor here at Point Blank Online. I've released music on labels such as Strictly Rhythm, Defected, Masters at Work Recordings, and many more. And I'm here to introduce this new course in sound design for Ableton Live. So we've got another subtractive example here using analog, and this is a Chicago-influenced bass sound. Have a listen in context. So it's nice and round and warm and it's very distinctively analog sounding and uh, you know the, the analog itself is really well suited to this particular type of sound. So let's rebuild this, we're going to go through the steps and I created this beforehand and uh, I can remember some of the things that I did but I don't remember absolutely everything so we're going to need to reference the original one every now and again but uh, I'm going to take you through the decisions and uh, the reasoning behind uh, certain parameter changes. Let's solo this and let's take a look. Let's open up an analog on this track and the default sawtooth is basically the wrong type of sound for this. We're going to switch to the pulse and the other thing to do straight away is to take the width to 100%. So let's have a listen and see how that feels now. So the first thing that I did was to take the octave down. Nice warm low tone. The other thing that I did was on the volume section to take the voices down to mono. So it's only one note at once. It had a filter and this is creating that nice kind of plucky warm tone and I used the 24 dB per octave slope. Let's take the frequency down here. It was somewhere down here, I did the envelope. Just gonna make some changes here, just have a listen. See if we can get it close to what it was before without referencing the, the other one. So I'm going here for relatively low sustained frequency. On the actual MIDI data, you can see that there are some quite long notes here. So it's just to keep the, uh, the frequency quite warm instead of it being fizzy, look. But of course, this is affected by the amplifier envelope as well, and there's no high sustain level there. If I lift this out, we can bring out some more energy there. So if I come back to this filter, really clearly hear the sustain sections. So with the sustain level lower, we can still detect the actual sustain notes, but they're just warmer. It's working nicely. You're going to bring the release shorter. Now one of the things that I did with the oscillator was to adjust the pulse width, and I did that using an LFO. So I'm going to do this for you now. Let's turn on LFO 1. At a slow rate, I'm going to increase the amount of here so you can hear it. Can you hear the movement of the pulse wave there? So I'm going to adjust it back, really subtle. So it's working nicely. Just going to take this off, see how it feels in context with the beats. I'm going to reference the other one now, and uh, it sounds pretty close to me, to be honest, and uh, I don't want to dwell too much on the specifics of being identical, so let me just have a listen. Okay, now it sounds to me like the filter is slightly different on this one. Let's take a look, 135 and 21. So I didn't bring up the resonance there. That would explain why it's not quite as bouncy. And also on the original one, my envelope amount was less. So let's have a look, let's see how these feel now. Let's take that one off. Let's bring this on. That's working nicely. So it's a really nice warm bouncy bass sound that has got a place, you know, it's a real historic sound. Great for the Chicago style stuff and lots of other forms of house music. Very much a deep house kind of flavor here. So that's a nice patch to save. 
Save it and you can make your own customizations, of course, and uh, see what you can come up with.